you may not have a job. You may be getting money from different men. So you're sustaining your lifestyle, but you're not going to open your mouth and say, well, um, I don't have a job, but I still get money. Cause he's the, the first thing, that's the first thing he's going to think you're selling. You don't want him to think that. So you'll be like, oh yeah, you know, I'm, I'm a freelancing therapist right now. Um, I have different clients that I talk to day to day and, um, you know, I'm working on getting my license and getting more certified girl. Tell me that I don't sound top notch. Welcome back to the Next Door Podcast. I am Bestie Next Door, and I'm like your bestie next door. If you like your tea to be extra, extra sweet, then this place is not for you because we like our tea to be sweet and bitter. Sweet enough that it goes down, bitter enough to wake us up. So today, we're going to talk about how to be a woman that every man desires. Now, before I start this episode, I really want you guys to understand this. I also, I live stream on TikTok most of the time and take the audio and put it on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Spotify, all the streaming platforms, and also the visual is also available on YouTube. And before we get into the topic, if you're looking for the next caller shirt, you can find it in the link in the description box, or you can find the link in my bio on Instagram or TikTok. Also, the guide to level up and seduction is available for pre-order. It's going to be released this month. It's both audiobook and ebook. That just reminded me. If you're looking to book a one-on-one -on -one with me, you can get that also in the link in my bio as well. And if you need like quick advice, like let's say you want to talk to me for like 10 minutes because you're like going through a, a quick situation, you can cash at me your username and then I'll give you a call immediately at the moment once I see your cash app. So now let's get into how to become the woman every man desires. First, let me get a sip of my tea because woo. All the comments you guys have, I'm going to answer you guys' questions, but I want to be more organized with my episodes because I feel like I'm always disorganized with my episodes. So right now I'm going to get into the topics and then we're going to answer questions. Like I'm going to leave the end for questions. Anything you guys want to talk about, we'll talk about it. Okay. So for those of you that's listening, anytime you have any questions, it's always recommended for you to come and watch my TikTok live. I always, I always tell you guys when I'm going live. So now. When you want to become the woman that every guy desires, it's all about your conversations. As you guys can see, I told you guys so many times, I meet different kind of guys. And I've been, you know, married and stuff twice. And I'm like not even in my 30s yet. So I've been proposed to twice and I'm not even in my 30s. So clearly I know what I'm doing, right? Um, you guys know what happened in the first situation, how I left him. He was narcissistic and, you know, all the things that happened. You can see that story time on my YouTube or you can find that story time. Some, somewhere in this episode, you can find that story time. You guys know the what happened with my last fiance and why I had to leave him. So I, I literally, I did some research to find out as well. And I also did some market research as well. I asked my man, I asked a few male friends as well. And they all had the same, they all said the same thing. And most of them mentioned the first conversation. And I told you that I tell you guys this all the time about the first conversation. I feel like a lot of people don't master the first conversation because why? You know, they either ask too much serious questions in the beginning or they try to like prove something. And, you know, men are so used to not being heard that you as a woman, if you take your time to actually ask questions and let him talk more and hear more about him, it's kind of sort of attractive. And also you just like being open. And when I say open, cause I always say, don't be too open. When I say open, I mean, just like, not like, what do I mean by open? Like, I mean, like you don't say everything. You don't need to say everything, but you say enough where you're intriguing and you're just like mysterious and alluring is what I'm trying to say. Right. And another thing that I also notice as well is most of the time in the first, like within the first conversations, a lot of women tend to be a little bit argumentative, whether it, whether it be from different topics or whether it be just trying to prove what they do for a living or who they are and things like that. And those are things guys don't like. And that's not really desirable. You may think that the things that I'm mentioning are common sense, but believe me when I say common sense is not as common. I'm telling you right now, common sense is not common. And I literally grabbed all this tips from all these guys and also did my own research as well. So which is why I'm, I'm looking at my iPad and I'm also telling you guys from my iPad. And another thing that I also... um that my man said and a guy said that was like they were head on straight about this was a, a babe showing she's a boss babe now what does that mean it's okay to mention what you do it's okay right it's okay to mention what you do like yeah you know i'm into tech and you know i do x y and z it's okay but a boss babe is like the overachiever the one that feels like you know i don't need a man and you know um 
you arguing about your position and you like, you know, you're talking so much about yourself. And let me be honest with you. Us women, we really do fall. We are victims of always talking about ourselves. And that's why I always tell you guys, don't, don't tell a man too much about what you do. Tell him what it is. So he knows the type of level that you are in, in life, but don't say too much where you're bragging. Like, yeah, you know, I have this business and you know, this is what I do. And, you know, I, I'm doing this and I make this amount of money. You don't want to do that. You just want to seem like a woman that you have something going on for yourself, but you're also feminine because when you brag too much about your work and your career and what you do for a living, it does come off masculine because it comes off like you're being competitive, right? Because at the end of the day, why would a masculine man really care about what you, like how much you're making and what you really do? All he wants is a woman that is career driven, goal driven, but also feminine as well. Because, so, of course, you can't, I can't sit here and lie to you guys and say, oh, you know, you shouldn't do nothing with your life and a man's going to take care of you. No, it doesn't work like that. Some women can do that. It depends on the type of man and the type of lifestyle you want to live. But it's always good to have your own dreams and aspirations because it keeps you busy. When you're busy with your dreams and aspirations and goals, you're not going to be too focused on if he's cheating or if he's, do you're going to be focused on what you're doing in life. You get what I'm saying? So that's why it's really ideal for women to have something going on in life. However, you don't need to be an overachiever, like a boss babe. Like, oh, I got to let him know that I'm, I'm making eight figures. I got to let him know. You know what I'm saying? You don't need to do all of that because a lot, I'm telling you right now, this may sound so simple, but right now in 2023, I don't know what is in the air. I don't know if there's like some type of spray but the women nowadays are just so masculine, trying to prove a point that, yeah, I made this amount of money. We get our own money. Yes, it's okay to make your own money. I'm not arguing that fact, like I mentioned before. However, it comes off masculine when you're on a date with a guy and you're trying to make him spend money on you and you're sitting there like, yeah, yeah, I make this amount of So what's the point of him wanting to treat you like a princess or treat you like a feminine woman if you're sitting there saying, well, you know, I make eight figures and I spend this and I buy this and I do this and I... What's the point? You get what I'm saying? Be interesting enough to for him to know that you have something going on in life but also leave that mystery and also have that feminine energy to you where it's like sweetie I have what I want to do in life but I want to work smart not hard hello because you want a man to take care of you you don't want to be sitting there having to take care of yourself for the rest of your life you want to have you want to you want to be able to chase your dreams from a fun and free place because there's nothing like there's nothing better than knowing that all your bills are taken care of you got your man taking care of everything and you can chase you can chase your dreams from a free place knowing that you know you're just chasing it because it's your passion as opposed to oh i have to because nobody's gonna do it for me i hope that makes sense i hope that makes sense and the next thing is this the next thing that i have on my um list is this being transparent. That's also very really important. And I couldn't really understand what that transparent mean. But I, when my man explained to me, he was like, you know, um, one of the things that made me like you and one of the things that made me like what made me like you was how transparent you were about what you want. And just like, you know, just knowing what you want and, you know, telling me about certain things, you know. And I think that's really, really true. You know, I, I always told him, because realistically, I won't lie to you. As much as I like tell you guys about how my ex was a narcissistic man and all these other things, my ex did treat me good. I can't sit here and I will be sitting here lying through my teeth if I sit here and tell you guys, oh, yeah, he treated me so bad. No, he actually did treat me good. He bought me bags. He flew me places. You know, I can't lie. I, I really cannot lie. So I was transparent about my expectations and what I wanted as far as like the end goal of the relationship and who, who I was. I didn't lie. Like, this is my passion. This is what I do. And this is my passion. My passion is entertainment because that's what I studied in school entertainment business but however I'm doing PR for this person blah 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 blah, blah. like I was transparent with him you get what I'm saying he knew I was at a certain level because of course you can see like you know I look good but you know I was transparent with him about it and he loved that about me you know I wasn't pretending to be somebody I'm not. And that's something important. It's like when I mentioned packaging to you guys I hope you guys are listening and understanding. Um, I hope, okay. When I mentioned packaging, when I mentioned packaging to you guys, I'm not talking about packaging as pretending. I'm talking about packaging as far as knowing how to carry yourself and knowing how to package what you do. For example, right? Let's say right now, um, let's say, okay, let's say you, let's say right now you don't have a job, right? But you are, 
you are really good at writing resumes, right? You have to know how to package what you do. Even if you don't have a job, I'll give you an example. Let's say you're good at writing resumes and you don't have a job right now. You'll say to your, thank you for the roles. You'll say to your, you'll say to the guy like, oh yeah, you know, I'm a career consultant. Packaging. You're not going to sit there and say, oh, well, I don't have a job, but I'm good at writing resumes. No, you're not going to say that. You're going to be like, oh, I'm a career consultant. I help people find jobs. You know, um, what is it called? A recruiter. A recu <laughs> Sorry, guys. Tongue twister. Recruiter. Recruiter. I have my little accent. Recruiter. You'll say that or you'll say you're a career consultant. You know what I'm saying? Like something that like it sounds good. Like when when you say it, it sounds good. Not like, oh, you know, I don't have a job. I just write resumes. You don't want to sound so like, oh, you just write resumes. That's all you do. No, you don't want to sound like that. I hope you guys understand what I'm saying. Pack that's what I mean by packaging. Like you may not have a job right now or you may not have a career right now, but you gotta know how to polish it, make it sound good. You get what I'm trying to say? Like you may okay. For example, you you probably listen, you probably listen to gossip. You probably listen to your friends talk about all like their problems all day and you give them advice. You'll say, you know what? You'll say, this is what you'll say to him. You'll say, you know, I'm working on getting my therapist license. I'm a therapist right now. I'm a freelancing therapist. Look at you see, you see how you see how packaged that sound? I didn't just sit there and say, Well, I'll be home, I don't have a job right now, and I'm at, I'm home all day and I'm listening to my friends and their problems and giving them advice. No, because you may be getting money, because even though you're home. And you may not have a job. You may be getting money from different men. So you're sustaining your lifestyle. But you're not going to open your mouth and say, well, um, I don't have a job, but I still get money. Because the, the first thing he's going to think is you're selling, you're selling pussy. That's the first thing he's going to think. You're selling pussy. And you don't want him to think that. So you'll be like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm a freelancing therapist right now. Um, I have different clients that I talk to day to day. And, um, you know, I'm working on getting my license and getting more certified. Girl. Tell me that I don't sound top notch. He not going to ask no questions. Tell me that I don't sound top notch. Tell me it doesn't sound top notch. That's like, oh, okay. That's, that sounds good. But you don't want to sit there like, oh, I don't, I don't have anything I'm doing with my life. I'm just collecting money from men or I'm an OnlyFans girl. You don't want to even, even, even if you are an OnlyFans girl and you know your, your content is private, there's still a way for you to package it. You could be like, oh, you know, um, I'm a content creator or you say, but you know, sometimes, you know, it's, it's tricky to say content creator because most of the time when you say content creator, people don't really take it serious and they automatically think it's only fans. You get what I'm saying? So it all really depends. However, there's so many ways to package your job, even if you're selling pee. And I'm not sitting here telling you guys to sell pee, but I'm just saying like, let's say there's some girls that have sugar daddies, you know, all these other situations that really don't need to work and get money from men package what you do. There's always a title for what you do. You can be like, Oh, you know, I'm a, a freelancing project manager, a freelancing project manager for a company. I work with different companies and I help them organize their finances. Girl, you see, you see how, you see how clean that sounds? You collect it. Yeah. You're a project manager because all the sugar days you got are projects and you're helping them organize their finances. Hello. <laughs> Hello. I'm telling you, I'm giving y'all, I'm giving y'all real tea. I'm giving y'all real tea right now. That was, that was real tea. All right. So the next, <laughs> no, real tea. So the next thing is, um, well, we already know this, which is being feminine, right? Being feminine is something that a lot of us, a lot of women have issues with right now, currently in 2023. And I'm going to say this to you guys, stop thinking these men don't have money. I'm telling you right now, these guys, I, I say this in almost every episode because it's so true. Stop thinking these guys don't have money. The reason why you think they don't have money is because they're not spending on you. Because why? You're not acting like the feminine woman you're supposed to be. You may think that, oh, being feminine is so common nowadays, but it's really not as common as you think. It's really, really not. Let's start with dressing, right? Let's start with dressing. Hold on. Yeah, hold on, guys. I'm, 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 I'm getting into some stuff. I want. I'm gonna read you guys comments, and I'm gonna respond to you comments. I just want to get through my bulletins before I forget, because remember, I'm also posting this. I'm also posting this on YouTube and Spotify. Excuse me, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. So I need to get through my bullet points as well. Yes. Yeah, so you may think that being feminine is so common, and you like, oh, that's duh. But a lot of you don't realize you're in your masculine energy. 
a lot of you don't realize you're in your masculine energy. If you have a hard time telling a guy you need something, one, you're in your masculine energy. Number two, if you feel like you don't need a man, you're in your masculine energy. Number three, should I keep going? I think we, I think we, I think we get the drift, right? We get the drift because a lot of nowadays, 2023, a lot of women are like, I don't need a man. I got, I got my own money. You're in your masculine energy. It doesn't matter how feminine you dress. It's your energy. Energy speaks for itself. You get what I'm saying? Your energy is always going to speak for you before you enter the room. That's what you need to understand. You can dress, you can be wearing uh, sweatpants and a hoodie and you will still be perceived as, a, as, sorry, you can be wearing sweatpants and a hoodie and you will be still perceived as a feminine woman based off your energy, right? So if your energy is off and you have this masculine energy to you, when you walk through the door, it's going to show. When you talk to guys, it's going to show. But if you have this feminine approach to you, no matter what you wear, it's always going to be showing through your clothes that you are a feminine woman and you need to be taken care of, right? So like smelling good, knowing how to cook, knowing how to nurture. A lot of you don't know how to cook. Let's be real. And I, I'm not here to insult anybody, but part of being feminine is knowing how to nurture. A lot of you guys don't know how to cook. If I ask you guys to boil rice, y'all probably going to boil rice. Y'all probably going to burn the rice. Most of you guys need to understand cooking is important as, as part of being feminine. It's something that all women should know how to do, cook. Yes, men can cook as well, but it's important for you as a woman to know how to cook. If you don't know how to boil rice, you're in big trouble. I think you should go after watching this live and listening to this episode. I think you need to go on YouTube and really learn how to boil rice. I'm going to give you guys a tip because I know how to, I know how to cook really well. That's how, that's how, look, that's how I keep, I kept, that's how I kept it. That's how I keep them. You know what I'm saying? Besides the good cat. Besides, you know, the, you know, the cat be like catting. Besides that, you know what I'm saying? The fool be fooding after the cat. You get what I'm saying? Because he can't be hungry after he go into pound town. You know what I'm saying? He can't be hungry after pound town. So <laughs> now let me tell y'all. So when you are making rice, right? Let's say you're making one cup of rice. I have two ways of making rice. And this first way I made rice is a killer. Killer, 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 killer. Okay. So what you do is you put a little bit of oil in your pot, right? And you cut up either onions, well, you preferably scallion. I don't know how you guys, different people pronounce it different ways. Scallion or long onions, the green onions, you cut those up. You put it in there. You let it sizzle. Make sure you have your heat on low heat. Let it sizzle. That's what's going to give it the aroma, the smell. Then you put the, you, since you're cooking one cup of rice, you pour one cup of water and a, and a half inside the pot. You let the pot boil. You add your salt. Now, once you, obviously you have to wash your rice, wash your rice. You put your rice in the pot. You put your fire on low heat and let it steam. That's how you do not burn rice. The reason why a lot of you burn rice is because you have your rice on hot, like high. The fire is always high. That's the reason why you're burning rice. To not burn rice, you need to make sure your fire is on low heat or medium heat. Now, that's one way that I'm telling you how to make rice because that's the best way. Like, that's one of the best ways. That's like you doing, like, basmatic rice, right? That's basmatic rice. Now, if you're just doing regular cook-up rice, you have one cup of rice, one and a half cup of water. You pour it in, pour salt. You can put butter, let it boil, put it inside. Make sure you wash your rice. Put it inside and put it on medium heat. Simple. But I always still put my rice on low heat because I'm able to watch it. You know, when you have your heat, when you have your rice on high heat, that's how it burns faster. So always have your rice on low heat. I promise you, your rice is going to be coming out good. You're going to thank me later. Let me give you guys another tip because a lot of you also be burning plantains. You, you guys be burning plantains. When you want to make plantains, you do not cook plantains on high heat. First of all, However you slice up your plantains, you know, you slice it up, you add salt to it. You put your fire on high heat to heat up the oil. But once you put your plantains inside the pan, low heat, because you're able to control it because plantains burn really fast. They burn really fast. And if you're burning plantains, it's because you have the heat on high. I hope you guys understand. See, I'm even, I'm even giving you guys a cooking lesson. I'm even giving you guys a cooking lesson. Like, y'all y'all really, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm giving y'all all the tea. I'm going to need y'all to pre-order the guide to level up and seduction right now. Right now. Right now. The link is in my bio right now, right now, right now. 
right now, right now. I'm giving y'all too much. I, I'm giving y'all too much. I'm even giving y'all cooking lessons. I'm really y'all best friends. At this point, I'm y'all best friends. <laughs> Hello, I'm y'all best friend. I'm Because who, who really telling you how to make rice and plantains? Because I want y'all to win. I want y'all to keep y'all men. I want y'all to get men that provide for y'all. I'm not sitting here selling y'all stuff just to sell y'all stuff. I actually want you guys to live a life of freedom and peace. I don't want you with the dusties and the brokies. Like next caller. You see the shirt? Next caller with the eye roll. Next caller. Anyways. <laughs> I play too much. Hello. Okay. Now next, the next thing is be a woman who makes him feel great about himself and makes him feel needed. That's another tip in making, that's another tip in becoming a, that's another tip on how to be Come the woman that every man desires. Now, <clears throat> now, okay. You know what's what the one? I'm going to mention this. You know what's crazy about this last bulletin point? This bulletin point that I have is that we women are very selfish, and we don't like to admit that we're freaking selfish. We only care about the man making us feel good, but we don't care about making them feel good. We don't care about making them feel heard, and that's so important in being the woman that every man desires making him feel good making him feel he's needed babe i need you i want you you know i'm not gonna lie to you guys i used to be that girl i used to be the girl oh i hope my i thought my dog was under me i used to be that girl that was scared to tell guys that i need them i was scared like on you know dating my man now you know i remember one time like a few years ago we got into an argument and he just and i was yelling at him and he was like okay you're yelling at me because of what? And I was like, oh, you wasn't there for me, blah, 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 blah. And then he just told me straight to my face, why didn't you just tell me that you needed me? I couldn't even say anything. I was like, you know what? But, 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 you know, <laughs> let me tell you something. Us girls, we know the trick. You know what you do when you wrong? You know what us girls do when we're wrong in a situation? We start crying. <laughs> Girl, listen, when he said that, I was like, but... <laughs> I started cry I started crying my eyes out because I didn't have nothing to say and I didn't want to own up to it. You know what I'm saying? Like I didn't want to hold myself accountable. So the best thing for me to do is cry. So he could tell me, oh sorry, babe, it's okay, babe. I understand I wasn't there for you. You know, I, I flipped the script. I had to flip the script because you know I wasn't holding myself accountable. That was years ago. But now, of course, I hold myself accountable. Whatever I want, I say. If I say if I tell him I need you, he's coming. Whatever I need, I'm getting. You get what I'm saying? But then, girl. Anytime I'm getting into an argument with a guy and I'm losing the argument, the deal breaker, cry. I just start crying. The tears just start coming out. Oh my God, how could you say that to me? You hurt my head. Before you know it, he lost all the stuff that he was talking about and all the points he had was out the window. <laughs> Toxic 101. <laughs> yeah, hello. I might say you should do it, but I'm just saying. You want to win an argument with a man? You just start crying. Just start crying. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so anyway, you know, I hold myself accountable. Now I know better. <laughs> now I know better. So my point is this. You have to just make a man feel needed. That's the point I'm making. Like, that's how to be the woman that every man decides is making a man feel needed. That also ties into being feminine. You get what I'm saying? Being the woman that every man desires by making a man feel needed because nowadays in 2023 you know us women we don't make men feel needed anymore we look at the songs we make look at the things we talk about you get what i'm saying things like that the next the next um bullet point that i have is being adaptable in any situation i have a perfect example about this particular point all right let's say and i'm only using this i hope my friend is not listening to this because I'm only using this because this is what something my friend said to me. And I'm like, you know, this is a perfect example of how to be adaptable in any situation, right? Okay. Let's say you guys are going somewhere, right? One thing that I realize about men is this. And I'm going to tell you guys this, what I realize about men. They never like to be corrected on spot. I'm going to tell you, I'm giving you guys real tea right now. Real, real tea. If you want to correct a man, never correct him on the spot. Always wait till like, you know... Maybe when the day is over and you guys are in bed, he's going to receive the information better. I promise you. I'm, I'm telling you, I've learned this from all my dating experiences. Men don't listen. We, you know what we women think? We think that men don't listen when we say something, but it's the, the problem is, is that we say it at the wrong time. They're not ready to receive the information. For example, 
let's say you and your man is at a restaurant, right? And he maybe have been a little rude to the waiter. And he's usually not rude to the waiter. He's usually not rude to the waiter, but something that the waiter did really irritated him. Like you don't, you may not have paid attention or peeped it, but something that he did irritated him, right? So you see him being rude to the waiter. Most of us women like to correct it on the spot and say, babe, why are you being so rude? Like you don't need to do all of that, right? Now it's going to make your man defensive because now this is what men are going to feel like. He's going to feel like, why are you taking his side? Why are you not defending me? Even if I'm wrong, yeah, I may be wrong, but why are you telling me this now? Now you killed the whole mood of the whole situation. It's better for you to adapt to the situation. Now, adapting to the situation doesn't mean that you necessarily have to attack the waiter. Just like calm it down, you know, be like, oh, okay, babe. Oh, you know, try to, you know, get in between the communication without having to correct your man. You don't have to tell him he's being rude. You can show him how to not be rude. Obviously, after you talking to the waiter, but you know, respect, manners, you know, he's saying something, you'd be like, babe, just tell me what you want me to tell him and I'll time for you. You don't wait, don't tell him when you get to the car because he's still going to be upset because again, you may not have seen what the waiter did to upset your man. And you don't want your man to automatically think that in public, you're always going to have other people's back over his back. So what you do is, this is what I've learned. I'm giving you guys pure advice, like real advice, because this is what happened to me and I had to learn it over time. What you do is you wait till you get home, take off your clothes, you know, you guys are in bed and you talk to him about it and say, babe, you know, how you acted at the dinner wasn't really, I don't think it was cool. You know, you was a little bit rude to the waiter. And I, I, it made me uncomfortable. And then you hear what he had. Sorry, guys. Oh, my hair's not in the way. And then you hear what he has to say. You hear what he has to say. And then, you know, once you hear what you have to, once you hear what he has to say, believe it or not, because you said it to him at that time, he's going to receive the information and he's going to adapt and change his behavior. Because maybe, not that you have mentioned it to him, maybe he'll think about the situation and say to himself, like, damn, I overreacted. But let's say you had mentioned it at the dinner table while the waiter was bringing the food, he's automatically going to feel like you're taking the public or an opposing party side over his side. Because a man feels like this, no matter if I'm wrong or right, have my back. And that's how us women feel as well. Because if it was us women as well, we're, we're going to feel the same way. So sometimes as women, we need to understand that it's not that men don't listen. We just say it at the wrong time. They're not ready to receive the information that we want to say. That's really what it is. And I learned that. I actually had to learn that. I actually learned that myself that, you know, it's not that they don't listen because I always used to say, you don't listen, you don't listen. And then I tried to start saying it when he's ready to receive the information. And I started realizing that, you know, the attitude or whatever I'm talking about started to change. You know what I'm saying? So always when you want to correct your man about something, never correct him on the spot because he's not going to listen. Wait till, you know, a little later when you guys are settled down, correct him then maybe in the morning. That's what it is to be a woman. Patience. You got to have a little bit of patience. And most of the time, us women, we don't have patience. We always want to, oh, I got to tell him now. I got to tell him now. He ain't going nowhere. What you're saying ain't going nowhere. And if you claim that you're going to forget, sis, write in your notes. Trust. I'm telling you right now, write in your notes. Trust me. I'm saving you an argument. I'm saving you a disagreement. And I'm saving you from feeling like you're not being heard in your relationship. You get what I'm saying? Hello. Yes, a lot of a lot of a lot of women need to learn how to be patient. That's just what it is. We just need to learn how to. I had to learn. I'm telling you, me being a wife, patience is so important. I swear to God, because sometimes you just like we just want to get out emotions out. But you are a stronger woman when you know how to control your emotions and you know when and when not to talk. You are stronger as a woman. But when you just start running your mouth every time you get upset or anytime you feel like you need to correct something, you're not going to be as strong as a woman. You got to understand that. And I'm, and I'm just telling you guys this from my own experience because, again, I'm not sitting here selling you guys crap. I'm actually telling you guys things that I've experienced to help you avoid and help you become better women. You get what I'm saying? Like, this is what I've learned, you know? Now, the next thing, which is so important, and becoming the woman that every man desires is allowing your man to have the night out with his friends. I'm telling you, 
I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get to you guys' comments just now. I'm gonna get to you guys' comments. Let me just get through these bullet points, and then I'm gonna get to you guys' comments. So, that is so important. Do you know why that is so important? Because I feel like as women, we tend to be very selfish. We are selfish in the sense that we always want our man to be with us because it's fun. You know, being around your man is fun. You know, it's like you get to tell him whatever you want to tell him. You get to tell him all your tea. Tell him, you know what I'm saying? Have the little pillow talk. But you got to be the woman that encourages your man to have his man time. I promise you. If you're the type of girl that be like, oh, I don't want my man to go out because I don't know what girl's going to be there. After a while, your man is going to start detaching from you. You got to be the girl that be like, oh, baby, you going out tonight? You know what I'm saying? Like, maybe you're going out tonight. Enjoy that time away from him. You got to make your man miss you. Let him go out with his friends. Let him be in his man cave. Let him be an, ind an individual. That's the issue that a lot of women have when it comes to becoming the woman that every man desires is they don't understand you are an individual and he's an individual. Let him be him. Let him go out with his, when he go out with his friends, that's your time to be with you. You know what I'm saying? That's your time to talk on the phone with your friends. That's your time to, you know what I'm saying? Do so many different things. But you know, some of you are so consumed in your relationship that you don't even allow your man to go out with his friends because you're so busy thinking about, oh, I don't want him to be in a girl's face or I don't want a girl to be in his face. And then you have the excuse of, oh, it's not that I don't trust you. I don't trust your friends and I don't trust the girls that's going to be around. You got to be confident in yourself to know that you know what i'm confident and um first of all i'm the baddest he's gonna get look you gotta look yourself in the mirror like he about to go out oh he about to go oh you about to go out babe yeah because i'm the baddest he's gonna get so whatever girl is in the room she can't even add up five plus five can't even make me you know what i'm saying like the girl's giving a two so a one plus one you giving a five plus five. You got to be having that in your head. Like, I'm giving five plus five. I'm a 10. The girls he going to be seen in the club or wherever the girls that he, they invited is going to be giving one plus one. Some of them might be giving two plus two. Some might even give two plus one plus one. You know what I'm saying? But it ain't going to be a five plus five. Hello. You got to have that mindset. When you have that mindset... It's so unlikely for your man to step out on you because you're so confident. And you, and even if he does, you know, oh my God. Sorry, guys. You see my little puppy? Oh, sorry, Boogie. My little puppy. Go pee pee. Even if he does, even if he does, even if he does have any intentions of, you know what I'm saying, cheating or doing anything like that, you already know he's replaceable. Like, you know, like... <laughs> Just like how I got you, I can get somebody else. Hello. Because again, why? What did I say, guys? I need you guys to repeat this with me. You are five plus five, the, which equals 10. The girls he's probably going to see and the girls that's around is probably going to be a one plus one or a two plus two max or maybe a one plus one plus one, which is a three. It ain't never going to be a five plus five, which is you, a 10. Hello. Now, the next and, in, and most important thing that is so important that I think that a lot of women fail to understand is being intelligent. I'm telling you. that's I feel like forget about my looks. Forget about anything else. I think that one of the most things that makes my man so attracted to me is my mindset, the way I think how intelligent I am. I'm so inquisitive. I'm always looking for more information. Whatever he he's into, I always want to like, you know, spark up a little conversation. I don't want to just sit there like, oh yeah, babe. Yeah. I always want to have intriguing conversations with him, whether it be about, you know, politics, my opinion on politics or what's going on in the economy. Thing. I really, like, to be honest with you guys, I really research these things. I'm really, like, into things like that. So that is something that's so important. Don't be a pretty face with an empty vessel. You want to be the pretty face with a garden inside of her. You know, your cat is like the garden, but your brain is also like the garden as well. You get what I'm saying? Because, yeah, you know, we, you know, let, let me say this. I'm, I'm going to be real honest with you guys. You know how we, everybody talk about, oh, I got a good cat. Everybody, every girl in the world think they got a good cat. But none of them are saying, oh, I'm intelligent. How many, no, no, let, no, let's talk about this. Let's just really talk about it. We hear it in songs. This good cat, this cat is water, blah, 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 blah. 
But how many of them is actually saying, you know what? I got a good cat and I'm intelligent and I'm a smart girl. Barely, barely, but everybody got a good cat. So now, now let's, let's, let's have a real conversation. Now let's think about it. It seems like good cat is easy to find, but an intelligent woman is hard to find because you'll know the difference between a woman that's intelligent and a woman that's not intelligent because a woman that's intelligent will have more things to talk about and the way she carry herself. Now you see all these girls that say they got good cat online. Look at the way they dress. Yeah. It's, it's fun. You know, like, you know, it's, I'm not judging nobody, but remember, I, I always say this and I will say this. I've been saying this in all my videos for the past year and I will continue saying this. Dress how you want to be addressed. Dress how you want to be addressed. So everybody good, got good cat, but how many is saying, oh, I'm smart, I'm intelligent, or I know about this, or I know about that. And it's not that you're coming from a masculine standpoint, or it's not that you're coming from a know-it-all, because men also don't like a woman that know it all. But it's about sparking interesting conversations besides good cat. What else? All right. He probably went on 10 dates and all the girls are like, yeah, my cat good, you know, purr. I got like, you know what I'm saying? My cat's water, purr, purr, purr. All right, well, be mentally stimulating. That's what also makes you a 10. See, don't think that being a 10 is only all about your face, your body. That contributes to the 10, but it's also about what you have up here. Hello. You spark good conversations by staying up to date on what's happening. Men, listen, men are always watching the news. I'm telling you, men are always up to date on what's happening in politics. What's hap I can tell you this right now. There's a lot of women that don't know nothing about politics, even though if you don't watch it or you're not into it a hundred percent, but you could even, you could ask him like, Oh, what do you think about this? Just spark a conversation or, you know, just spark something that's interesting because that's what makes men enjoy their friends is those intriguing conversations they get to have. But you as a woman, if only thing you could talk about is loving hip hop or Zeus network, you're not really a 10. I'm telling you, there's a lot of girls that got their body done and BBLs and you know, they did their face, but they're not a 10. Don't let that fool you. Good cat is not the only, and a nice body is not the only equation to be a 10 and to be the woman that every man desires. Because yeah, some men are going to desire that woman to sleep with them, but we're talking about being the woman that's the wife, being the woman that's the main chick. Yeah, you may have, you know, a nice BBL job, but he's going to ask you, what's your price? And which is so disrespectful. What's your price? Like, how much? Oh, you want 5K for me, to, you know, to bring you to the hotel? No problem. But you want to be the woman that's kept. You want to be the woman that is making the decisions on whether you want this man to be in your life or not. You don't want to be the woman that a man is next caller, next caller. You want to be the one that's like, all right, next caller, <laughs> next caller. You know, because you know your value, you know your worth, you know that you have more to offer than just good cat. You get what I'm trying to say? I hope you guys get my drift. <laughs> Somebody said, Ashley, Ashley said the 5K sound kind of good. It does sound pretty good. But imagine being with the guy that can give you 5K every time because that's your man. Now, 5K in one shot, trust me, you're going to blow it really fast. Trust me. I, listen, been there, done that. You'll blow it really fast. But imagine being with a guy that you have in your life that you can always get 5K from. You could always ask him for $5,000. You could always ask him for $5,000. That's more than just being a one-night stand. That's better than being a one-night stand. One-night stand, sorry. <clears throat> sorry, I got to fix up. I got a little cold. I'm still coming off my cold. Yeah, like, listen, y'all think, first of all, let me, let me tell y'all something. Understand this about prostitutes. Because I already finished, okay, I, fin I think I finished the whole bullet points. And now I'm going to read you guys' comments. So it's probably going to be interesting for people who are listening and watching on YouTube. Let me let you guys, let me tell you guys something about prostitutes. You may be looking at these girls that sell them cat on OnlyFans or girls that, you know, get 10K. Trust me, the way that money, you'll be so, so I had a friend. Let me, let me just get into the story. I always got, look. <laughs> I'm always the girl with a story because I literally have a story for everything. I feel like, like, I feel like I'm in my forties because I've experienced so much in such a short period of time. I have a friend, right? I had a friend, an ex-friend. She wasn't, she's not my friend now, ex-friend. We, we, long story on why we're not friends, but she used to sleep for money. $2,000, $3,000. I'm telling you right now, the way this girl used to blow money was crazy, was crazy. 
Like she can sit there and be like, you know, I need to go out to eat because I'm just hungry. And that's why sometimes like I don't blame certain girls for feeling like they only have to like selling their bodies the only option for them but you have to have a plan if you don't have a plan and you're just selling your body trust me the way that money comes in so fast you're gonna blow it so fast and i've seen it happen and funny enough is i didn't even know she was a prostitute i didn't even know i really didn't even know she was a prostitute because i wasn't really hip into that like i didn't know you know i'm coming from a good background i have brothers I, i'm spoiled like kind of like a spoiled kid so i didn't know all of those things like you know selling pussy or you get money from me. i didn't know about that that was like years ago i didn't know about that so when i found out i'm like damn no wonder like you you just made like 5k just this week and you're spending like now you got to go back and do the same thing that's how these girls be in the cycle of selling pee because they have to do the same thing to keep up with their lifestyle because why they don't have a plan and i'm not judging you know me i'm betsy next door i don't judge nobody for what they do to make money because everybody got you know everybody got to eat i'm not judging nobody but if you're gonna ever feel like, like this first of all number one before I even say this, there's no amount of money that is worth your body. Because first of all, us women, we produce human beings. Pregnancy ain't no joke. Y'all can see. Look, heartburns, back pains, it ain't no joke, right? Number one. And there's no amount of money that can really ever be enough for you to sell your cat. However, again, judgment-free zone. I'm Bessie next door. If you ever feel like you have to, like whether it be stripping, you got to sell that cat, whatever. Have a plan. What is your end goal? How much do you need to make? If you don't have an end plan, you're wasting your time. I remember I, when I went to um, entertainment school, um, one of my teachers used to say this to us. She said, if you don't plan, you plan to fail. Simple. If you don't plan, you plan to fail. You plan to fail. Yeah, there's some girls, like for example, let's use Cardi B as an example. Cardi B started stripping, but she had a plan. She didn't just start, she didn't just strip with no plan. Like, you know what? I'm about to be stripping. You know, I'm going to just keep stripping until, you know, I keep buying my bags. I keep buying this nice hair. No, she had a plan. A lot of strippers and a lot of girls who sell, like, sell pussy, a lot of girls who are on OnlyFans, they don't have a plan. That's why they're stuck doing what they're doing. Have a plan. How much money do you want to make? All right, I want to make 100K. When you make that 100K, walk away confidently knowing that you're going to be able to make more with the next business plan you have but if you walk away like oh i'm not sure if i'm gonna make 100k this money's too good you're gonna be stuck you're gonna be 40 you're gonna be 45 you're gonna be 50 on only fans still selling that pee or still stripping hello let me answer your questions i gotta pour some more tea all right, let me answer y'all guys' questions. Questions, questions, questions. And I'm going to say this again. If you're looking for the next caller shirt, as you guys can see, I'm wearing a next caller shirt. There's also sweaters, sweatpants. You can find a link in my bio. The Guide to Level Up and Seduction is also available for pre-order at a discounted price because once it's released, it's obviously not going to be the same price, obviously, clearly. Also, um, what else? The High Value Woman Workbook is also there. The High Value Woman Workbook is there to help you evaluate yourself as an individual emotional intelligence, your values and boundaries, things like that, et cetera, et cetera. If you're looking to book a one-on-one -on -one with me, the link is also in my bio as well. If you need quick advice, I'm not, like, I'm not here to take your money either. If you need quick advice, just like I want to talk to you for like 15 minutes because I need to vent or I need a quick opinion, you can cash at me. My cash app is Bessie Next Door, a little $15 with your username, like, yo, I need you to talk to me right now, pronto. Girl, I'll pick up the phone, like, girl, what's up? Spill the tea. I'm going to tell you the truth. Hello. All right, let me get you, to you guys' questions. What's the questions? Okay, how to know if you should spend the block on a gorgeous guy? Okay, first of all, number one, I always ask myself this question. If you was to have a kid with him right now, yeah, your kid, your kid may have gorgeous features, but is he, is he going to be able to provide? Number one. Number two, are you just digmatized? Because sometimes you wanna spend the block on a guy and you just digmatized. And you gotta understand that you gotta separate dick from reality. Let me say this again. I, I'm going to bleep it out because I, I don't know if someone's screen recording and, you know, profanity is not really, you know, online. You got to separate the D from reality. Don't confuse it. The D will have you in La La Land. Reality is reality. And them bills need to get paid. Hello. Hello. 
how do you feel how do you deal with a guy a guy forgetting oh you guys are moving too fast the guy i'm dating said he's broke and needs a pause is he lying or if this is be no anytime a guy tell you he's broke and he needs a pause respect it don't waste your time don't feel like oh my god even if he's lying god is saving you God is saving you from wasting your time. Next caller, if he tells you I'm, if he's like, you gotta, you gotta listen to guys when they speak. If he's literally telling you, oh, I'm broke and I need to pause, respect it. Even if it's a lie, who gives a fuck? He just told me he's broke. The, listen, there's no guy in this world that's ever gonna tell you I'm broke. They're gonna act broke, but they're not gonna tell you they're broke. So if he's telling you he's broke, whether he's lying or not, girl, move on. R gradually, happily, respectfully, thank him. Even thank him and tell him, like, thank you for not wasting my time, sweetie. Because, look, it's not giving $5 over here. Remember what I said? All of us on this live is 5 plus 5. What is, equals what? A 10. You're not a 2 plus 2. You're not a 1 plus 1 plus 1, a 3. A 5 plus 5. You're a 10. So, clearly, he can't afford the 10. Thank you for the heart. Clearly, he can't afford the 10. That's why he's telling you he's broke. Because why? You're a 10. He don't, he don't even got five nickels to rub together. He don't got five nickels to rub together. He don't got two nickels to rub together to make a 10. So why would you even want to be there? He's telling you what he is. Once he tell you what he is, you need to gladly move away. Because you know what? Brokenness, is, being broke is contagious. If you're around a man that's broke, it's going to be contagious as well. Because you know why? Broke men have bad energy. And that bad energy is going to mess up your money too. Hello. And we can't have that. It's 2023. The way the economy is going, we can't have that. He said he's broke. All right. Take your sandals. Dust it off and run to the left. Yeah, Maya, I'm not saying everything's about money, but I'm being realistic. This is what you need to understand. You, you're you probably used to dealing with guys that don't have money for you to say everything's not about money. That's why you're saying that. Because if you're used to dealing with guys that have money, then you will understand exactly what I'm talking about. Because it's not about money. It's about the energy. It's about the vibe. When a guy is broke, you listen. When a guy is broke, he's in a toxic energy. It's toxic. So this has nothing to do with the financial, the finances as well. It has nothing to do with the fine. It has a lot to do with the energy. You've dealt with so many broke guys, so you can tell us. You know how they are. They they stop your opportunities. They don't want you to make more money than them. They're jealous. But when you're dealing with a guy who has money, you don't have to deal with any of that. You you're not gonna. You may have other problems to deal with, but you're not gonna have to deal with that nasty energy that a broke man brings to a, the table. So, so you can't, Maya can't come here and talk about something. It's not a, yes, it is about money. Cause you can't, listen, if you could, listen, I want you to tell me the moment you find a bank that allows you to deposit words or it's not about money or feelings as a deposit and you could deposit it to the bank, please let me know. I want you to try to tell your landlord, you know what? I'm going to give you an assignment. Since you're, saying, since you're saying it's not about money, I'm going to give you an assignment. Go to your landlord, and when your landlord asks you for the rent, be like, it's not about money. It's not about money. It's about peace and love. Tell your landlord that you want to pay your rent with love, and I want to see what happens. Just, 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 just try it. Just go, you know what, sis? That's, that's even too much. Go to your nail tech. Go to your nail tech. Call your nail tech right now. Call your nail tech and tell her, oh my God, girl, you know, I, I can't, you know I'm living this new life right now. And I'm realizing that money's not everything. Tell her that you want to pay her with love. Tell her you want to pay her with love. Just, just see. Just check. You know what? That's even too much. That's too much. Because your, your nail tech knows you. She's probably going to be like, you know what, girl? You're crazy. Next time you got me. Go to the store. Go to the grocery store. Go without your EBT card. Go without cash. Go without debit card. Go without credit card. And you go to the cashier and say, you know what? I'm buying all these groceries with love. Security, security, girl, they'll grab you off so fast. Then you'll realize that, damn, this life, this world, there's no love. You'll realize, you'll come back to my life so fast, like, you know what, Bestie, you're right. It's about the money. It's about the money. They embarrassed me. I'm embarrassed. I thought I could pay things with love because I thought it's not about money. Now I'm homeless. I can't pay for my food. My nail tech doesn't want to answer my calls. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you, sweetie. I ain't telling you a lie. I tell you anything, but I never tell y'all a lie. 
So when you want to, the next time you say, it's not about money, it is about money. It is, it's always going to be about money because you can't pay any bills with love. You can't go to the club and say, oh, I'm buying 10 bottles. I want to give everybody a hug. So it is about money. Stop dealing with these broke men. Next question. Next question. How, <laughs> how to, okay, you guys are moving so fast. Let me swipe to the right so I can see the comments better. Okay. <clears throat> yes, I am. Um, yes, I am. Okay. How do you get over a breakup after he's been watching? I don't, I don't understand that question. Next question. You know what? Like, right? Imagine going to the club and buying bottles with love. You're like, you know what? Waiter, I don't want to tip you right now. I want to give you a hug. You'll see how quick that security is going. And you know how security be od in the club. They love to throw people out. They love to throw people out. They love it. You'll see how quick you open your mouth and say, oh, I'm paying my bottles with love. Security is going to take you and throw you out so fast. Security is always waiting to throw somebody out. And don't be that person that goes in that club and say, I'm paying with love because you're going to be the person he throws out. Okay. All right. So next question. <laughs> Sorry. I, I, had to, I had to go. I just had to go in on her real quick because I, I be hating when girls be trying to say that because I used to be dumb like that too. I used to be stupid. and be like, it's not about the money. It's about the love until I couldn't pay rent. And now I'm like, damn, you know, let, um, I want to give you my heart as a, a, a payment method. Anyways. <laughs> okay. Um, how to make a man regret playing you. All right. One of, how to make a man regret playing you. You make a man regret playing you, playing you by not giving a fuck. Move on. When he see you looking good, you see the problem is you're too focused on making him regret instead of becoming the woman that he can't even get next to. Hello? I'm going to say that again. You too focused on making him regret losing you instead of becoming the woman that he can't even get next to anymore. Hello? Hello? Worry about becoming the woman that he can't even get next to anymore. Worry about that. When you become that, then he's going he's gonna to naturally regret it. But when you sit in there like, oh my God, I got to make him regret it. You're not going to be that girl. You're not going to be that girl. Next question. Okay. How to deal with loneliness when you're single? Okay. First of all, to tap back into the, the last question, I need you to pre-order the Level Up Guide to Seduction. When you pre-order the Level Up Guide to Seduction, is at a discounted price. Trust me, you're going to level up. It's about dressing. It's so much. And it's both ebook and audio book. So it's a bundle. It's not just like an a ebook. It's also audio and ebook form. But um, next, somebody asked something that was more important. Somebody asked something. Oh, the question went away. Okay. Um, how to get a man to pay your bills. Now, this is so important. This is so important. I'm going to give you guys a story because I always have a story. You guys know I always have stories. So I have this one friend, right? And we were talking. One of the ways to absolutely make a man not do something for you is by sounding so needy. And what do I mean by needy? I mean this, right? You're like, oh, I just lost my job. You know, I don't have anybody to ask. Just, just ask him. Just ask him. Whatever how much you need, you be like, oh, if you need 2000 don't ever ask a man for the exact amount. Always ask him for more. If you need 2000 ask him for 3000 Never say, oh, I need 2000 because that man is not going to give you 2000 Trust me. Men are good negotiators. They're always going to talk you down. You're going to say, oh, I need 2000 He's going to give you 1500 That's how men are. We all know this. We all. This is not nothing new. We all know this. You need 2000 you ask him for 3000 Don't sit there and think that, oh, I'm going to tell him all my problems. No, that's not going to work because you remember, you're a 5 plus 5. You're a 10. And a five, plus five, a five plus five already knows that if I ask him, he's going to give me. I don't got to sit there and give him too many stories. Because giving him too many stories is just too much. Because remember, you are a packaged woman. You are at a certain level in life. And you sitting there telling him, oh, I can't afford to pay my bills. Or you tell him, oh, you know, I just lost my job. And you know, everybody got shit going on. He ain't trying to hear that. He's not your therapist. Ask him. He's not giving you. Next caller. Simple as that. You need 2000 Hey, babe. Yeah, I need 2000 to do um, a few things. He should be able to give it to you, period. 
If he's not going to give it to you, next caller. Simple. Why are you wasting your time? Because you know what? He's going to sit there and put you on your back when he wants, right? He's going to be like, oh, babe, what you doing? Oh, babe, I want to come over. He's going to still talk to you like that, right? So if he can't give you what you're asking for, what's the point of you laying down with him or continuously having him in your rotation? It makes no sense. Next caller immediately. Next caller immediately. No sorrow stories. I'm, I'm cutting the bullshit because men are very straightforward. And we got to understand that about men. Men are very straightforward. They don't waste time. When they want something, they tell you what they want straight up. They don't sit there and be like, oh, um, babe, I'm thinking about, or babe, you know, I, I want to know what that, you know, I want to know what color. No, they're straightforward. They tell you, I want to have sex. Simple. They don't be sitting there beating around the bush. So when you want some money, you don't beat around the bush either. You don't waste no time. Because remember, you're a five plus five, a 10. Hello. And he knows he's dealing with a 10, so he knows he needs to do the things necessary to keep his 10. Hello. All right. How? Wait, somebody said, um, okay, whoa, your question is going really fast. Okay. How to get a man, how to get the man, the money without ever meeting up. Okay. That's a good one. Cause I used to do that. Girl, I used to do that. I used to do that. I used to do that. Y'all going to get me in trouble. I'm feeling too much. See, I used to do that. I used to do that. I hope, you know what I'm saying? I used to do that. Let me tell y'all. Let me tell y'all what I do. Illusion. I used to, let me say something. I used to, I used to sit home. This is like when I was like 20. This is like after my bartending. Cause you know, I used to be a bartender like early in the days. So that's how I even know so much about different guys and blah, 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 blah. After I left my bartending job, I used to literally sit at home and just collect money from guys without seeing them. You know why? It's all about illusion. It's all about making them feel like they're about, you gotta make them feel good. How do I, how do you make them feel good? And what do I mean by that? I mean this, you don't gotta sit there and be like, oh, he not, he not, he not, he not doing this. Or you gotta sit there and be like, yeah, babe, I'm about to come over. You, you be like, babe, yeah, I'm thinking about coming over on Friday. Even though you're not coming on Friday. And Friday come, you give him an excuse. You talk, listen, listen. Since you talk all that hot shit, you talk all that hot shit, like you about to, you about to, eh, 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 eh. then you be like, yeah, babe, I need some money before Friday. Trust me, because men are so thirsty. Men are so, some men are so thirsty that they're going to give you whatever you ask for before Friday because why? They want to see you. They want to get what they, they want to get that hot pocket. They want that hot pocket so bad. So they're going to give you the money. And then Friday come, you be like, yeah, babe. Oh, Friday, babe. Oh my God, babe. My mom just came in town. You know, you probably, you know what you do? Because you, you don't want your lies to catch up with you. So you even send him an old video. You send him a video, like a video, like maybe of your mom, of you out to eat with your mom or something. You're like, yeah, babe, my mom just came into town, blah, 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 blah. Babe, do you mind taking care of the bill for me? I'm going to come see you on Monday. She's leaving on, or she's leaving on Wednesday. Bitch, I'm giving y'all tea. I'm giving y'all tea. I'm giving y'all tea. I'm giving y'all a real finesse book. That's why they need to, they need to pre-order. They need to sit there and pre-order the guide to level up and seduction right now, as it's at a discounted price, it's coming out in a week. I'm telling you, I'm giving y'all real finesse. You have to make sure your lies make sense. That's what, that's all it is. Make sure your lies make sense. So now you be like, oh, my mom is in town. You send him a picture. You can find some old pictures. I know you got, I know you got some old pictures. Some old pictures like you and your mom out to eat. You took your mom shopping and you asking for money. And be like, yeah, babe. And you still, and you know what you do? You gotta call him. You got to call, because you know what it is? Some of y'all be scared to talk to guys on the phone. When you talk to a guy on the phone, you sound more believable. You sound more, oh, I can trust her. But if you're sitting there texting him and you don't want to call, you don't want to answer a FaceTime, call him. Be like, yeah, babe. Always call. Be like, yeah, babe. Try to make him feel like, you know what you do? You make him feel like he's in the loop. You don't feel like he's out of the loop. Like, yeah, babe. My mom just came, so I'm going to call you back. Okay, babe? Yeah, babe. All right. So even if you want to ask him, through text, at least you called him. At least he heard your voice. And you keep that soft voice like, yeah, babe. Yeah, babe, I'm so mad right now. I wanted to see you. I wanted to see you so bad on Friday. But guess what? My mom is in town. Yeah, my mom's in town. I think she's leaving on Wednesday. I'm going to send you pictures, babe. Don't worry, I'm going to send you pictures. Thank you for what you gave me the other day. I'm happy. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm, I'm still going to keep you up to date, though. Yeah. All right. Even if you don't want him to see how your mom looks, just put like a, a little emoji or like, you, you know, like, let's say, you know how sometimes us girls, we be taking pictures of our hands and our food or whatever. 
send him something like that. You don't gotta sit there and take a picture of your mom face to face, like your mom face. So he has a pic. You don't need him to know how your mom looked, cause you know, you don't want your lives to get caught up. But just take a picture of maybe hands or something like, let's say her hands or like half of her. Send it to him like, yeah, babe, babe, we're out. Can you send me some money? Boom. You just, you just caught him for a, a band. He don't. You t listen, bitch. You talking this nigga out his wallet. I'm teaching you how to talk him out his wallet. Y'all better be taking notes. Y'all better be screen recorded. I'm teaching you how to talk a guy out his wallet. I'm teaching you how to talk a guy out his wallet. It's all about illusion. You got to keep... Listen, men... You see, look. We women, we go by what they hear. Men go by what they see. So you got to keep mind... You got to keep mind messing them. Keep mind messing them. Making them think that, oh, you know... Even if you got to send them a little cute picture like, yeah, babe. Oh, you know... And look, never, ever, ever... This is one of the most important tips I will ever give you guys. You never, ever send any nudes with your face. Any nudes where, let's say if you have tattoos, you never, ever in your life, I will punch you on the throat. You never in your life ever send any nudes with your tattoos showing, your, your face, ever. Even if you need to steal a picture from online, do it. Because remember, you don't plan to see this guy. You don't plan to see this guy. You don't plan to do nothing with him ever. So even if you want to, you got to snatch a picture from online, snatch the picture. You got to do whatever it takes to talk this guy out of his wallet. Get that money out of his wallet. That's your, your job. Your main objective is to get his money into your account. So if you're trying to get his money into your account, you got to play the game. You know how to play the freaking game. Don't sit there like, oh, Cause see, this is how some of you, this is how some of you bitches be losing. Because some of y'all be losing because y'all be having this attitude like, oh, no, I'm not coming. Yeah, I can't come Friday because my mom is around. No, you, you, no, girl, no, girl. You let me, I, let me do it again. And remember, it's not through text. Sometimes you gotta call. You have to call. Remember, you have to call. Don't be scared to call these guys. Call them because when you call them, you sound more believable. A lot of you are so used to, oh, I'm gonna text him. I'm just gonna text him. No, bitch, call him. Call him. Yeah, babe. Even if, listen, even if you got a video call him, even you got your makeup done, you video call him, you be like, yeah, baby, my mom is in the other room. I was just thinking about you. Yeah, I was just thinking about you. Yeah, we're about to go out to eat. Yeah, babe. Babe, do you think I could get $500 to take her out to eat? She just came in town. You know, I just moved here and she just wanted to see me and see how I was doing. Do you mind? You could ask him through video call. You could ask him on the phone. I'm like, yeah, babe, she's around. Yeah, I don't have a, some, you know, what's funny is some of them, because if you're so good at talking and sweet talking, some of them are going to offer you the money. Like, oh, do you need money to take her out? Some of them are going to offer you. That's if you like, you got a good one, but some of them you got to ask. You're like, you know, some of them you got to ask. And you'll be like, yeah, babe. Yeah, babe. My mom just came into town. Yeah. She, she wants me to take her out. And the money you gave me is not enough. Cause I, I didn't even, you got to make it sound like you're so aggravated. Like, Babe, I'm so aggravated. Like, I didn't even plan for any of this. Like, I didn't plan for her to come. She just came on her own. She just said she wanted to check up on me. She did just popped up. And, you know, I was supposed to see you on Friday. Like, you know, I'm supposed to see you on Friday. So what's up? First of all, who's this? Uh, Doc Pepsi. So none of you city. I'm not, first of all, number one, I'm not a city girl. Number one. I See, you probably just came in this live. Because I've just, I just talked about how to boil rice, how to fry plantains. Anyways, next, I need some moderators. So... You gotta, you gotta, you gotta make it seem like, you know what I'm saying? Like your mom coming was so annoying. Like, damn, she just came out of nowhere and you know, you're so irritated and the money he just sent you wasn't enough. Boom. Muslim, guess what? Guess, what it look like I'm having? What it look like I'm having? Guess, just guess, just guess, just guess. I'm so excited. Just guess. Rebecca, it will work. It works everywhere. It works everywhere. It works everywhere. So, that's what I'm saying. Y'all be thinking. Y'all be thinking these guys don't be having money. Some of them is a sucker for love. Trust me. Nope. Nope. Y'all wrong. Y'all wrong. No. No, it's not. No, it's not a girl. It's not a girl. It's not a girl. And the ones, you just said some of the men are broke. Next caller. Next caller. Next caller. What was the question? Yay, it is. I'm team blue, team blue, team blue. I'm team blue. A girl, you see, I can't get that this type of glow. You know what I'm saying? I can't get this type of glow with a girl. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it don't give that. It don't, it don't, my face don't give girl. It don't give, it don't give girl. 
Like, I'm going to raise my boy to be, you know what I'm saying? He going to be like, look, listen, listen, sir. She cute. She a five plus five. You better, you know what to do. You know what to do. Well, his father going to talk to him. So, I'm, you know, but I'm going to make sure I'm, he treat the girls good. I make sure he treat the, girl, the girls good. His his father, he got he has a good father. His father cute. You know, his father like six one. You know what I'm saying? You know how we like all the, you know, his father's not six one, six two. You know how we like the tall, you know, tall guys. So he gonna be tall. You know what I'm saying? He gonna be packing. Listen, y'all better protect, y'all better hide y'all daughters. Y'all better hide y'all daughters. <laughs> y'all better hide y'all daughters. Thank you. Yes. No. Ask any question. Ask any question. I'm about to get out of here. I'm about to get off of here in 10 minutes. In 10 minutes. 10 minutes. 10, 10 minutes. So, guys, for the last time, I, I, I choose both. Someone just asked, money overlooks. I choose both. I, I would never, ever, ever disrespect my future kids like that and sit there and say, oh, my God, I only care about money. I can have both. Just like how a man can have a woman that looks good, intelligent, dress well, well packaged, why can't you as a woman have the same thing? You see, I feel like us women, we were trying to like downgrade our expectations because it's easy for a man to find everything he wants. A beautiful woman, nice body, intelligent. She's a wife material. She knows how to cook. So why can't you find a man that has money and is attractive? I would, I would, listen, let me say something. I am not these other people online that would say, oh my God, it, it looks don't matter as long as he's rich. No, bitch. Looks matter. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I care about my future kids. I care about how they look. So I'm not going to sit here and preach to you. I'm like, oh my God, well, if he's a millionaire, then they, like people online always make us women feel like we have to pick between the, the, between the two. Oh, he has to have money. If he has money, he, he's going to be ugly. No, we don't have to pick between the two. Just like how a man doesn't have to pick between having a woman that's cute with a fat ass. I shouldn't have to pick between a man that's broke and rich or a man that's Cute and broke. I shouldn't have to pick between that. I want him to have money and look good. And that's what I got. Hello. Exactly. Exactly. Wait, Cam Cam, what was your question? You, you know you guys' questions is going really fast. Thank you for the rose. You guys know your questions is going really, really fast. So I'm looking, I can see it, but it's moving too fast. So d please excuse me if I'm not really like answering your question. Don't be offended, okay, boo? Don't be offended. Don't be offended. Thank you for the rose. Yep. Because I want my kids to be able to have a father that can provide for them and also be like, yeah, well, my father look good. Like, you'd be like, damn, who's your father? Oh, my father's 6'4". Yeah. Not, oh my God, my father's rich, but he's old and he's ugly. Oh my God, thank you for that. Thank you for the heart. Thank you. I don't want them to be like, oh yeah, my father, you know, he's ugly and, you know, he's, his hairline's receding, so my hairline's receding. Because, listen, let me say something. It's hard. Look, I don't want to get into that topic because I don't want to offend nobody, but y'all know what I mean. Y'all know what I mean. Y'all know exactly what I mean. Just like how, like I said before, if a man can get a woman with a fat butt and a cute face, we can also get a man that has money and looks good. And don't get it confused. It don't have to be the richest guy in the world. Like when we say, when, when I say a guy, a rich, we, it don't need to be a guy that's seven figures. It could be a guy that just provides, buy you nice things, make sure your bills is paid, make sure he takes care of you. That's what I mean by a guy that's, you know, rich. Cause that's kind of rich. You know what I'm saying? Like that's a guy that can take care of you is, you know, he's rich in his pockets. He's rich in the D he's rich in the face. You know what I'm saying? His face is T. His pockets is T. His D is T. You know what I'm saying? I, look, when you wake up in the morning, you want to wake up in the morning to a monster or what? I'm not a sprinkle, sprinkle girl. I'm a next caller girl. Her. I'm not a sprinkle, sprinkle girl. I'm a next caller girl. Her. Okay? Because I'm next caller or anything. Anything next caller. Anything next caller. Because look, I can't deal with a guy with a receding hairline. You could be the, you could, listen, let me tell you something. I care about you. Look, I cannot deal with the guy with a receding hairline. Cause what, so now, now what my kids going to have, you can't, you know what I'm saying? Like, no, next caller. I'm sorry. I can't deal with a rich guy with a small pee pee. I can't, there's so many things I could deal with, but I cannot deal with a small pee pee. You wait, time out. All right. Some of y'all be like, oh, it don't matter if he's rich. Wait, 
first of all, his his D is small. He's ugly. Oh no. Nah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Next caller. I'm sorry. Look, if a man could find a woman with good cat, big butt, cute face, then I want him good D, cute face, good pockets. Hello. Don't play with it. Don't play with it. Don't play with it. I do not compromise on that. You got to listen. Small pee pee. You gotta go. You know what? I think that, let me tell y'all T. Let me tell y'all something T. I think that's why it was so easy for me to leave my last ex. Cause his people was not given. Every I'm like, you know what? You sitting here trying to be a narcissistic man to me and you can't even you're not even first of all, you're not even matching your attitude. How your attitude so big, but down there not that big. You know what I'm saying? Cause that's how you know what I'm saying. Let me tell you, sometimes you stay with a narcissistic man because you're like, you know what, he takes care of me, but you know, at least he got some good pee. But sir, how you got a big attitude and down there not that big? It's not matching. The levels is not matching. That's why it was so easy. I looked at him like, sir, I'm leaving. You you can't be, listen, I need, I need you to match what you got in your pants. Match what you got in your pants. I'm gonna you to bring down that energy, bring down that attitude to match what you have in your pants. You can't be having big man, big D energy, and you don't got that. And you don't got that. I'm sorry. That's why it was so easy for me to leave my ex fiance. So I'm like, sir, your attitude do not match what you got in your pants. Act what you got in your pants. That's what I'm going to start telling guys. You know what you got to start telling guys, girls? Look, y'all got to screen record this. Y'all got to screen record this. Act what you got in your pants. Act like what you got in your pants. That's what it needs to be. That's, that's the quote for the year. Nah. That is the quote for the year. Act like what you not be acting like what they got in their pants. That's the problem. That's the problem we having nowadays. Some of them be having big, big energy. Some of them be having big energy. And then you zip, you pull their pants down. You're like, whoa, you're not even a capital P. You're not even a capital P, sir. You a lowercase P. You got capital P energy and you a lowercase P. Something. You got to tell these guys, like I said, just in case you guys missed it. Act like what you got in your pants. When a guy try to get disrespectful and be like, oh, you broke. Oh, you don't got this. Be like, sir, act like what you got in your pants. You got too much attitude to be acting like that. Act like what you got in your pants. Hello. A lowercase p? Act like a lowercase p that you are. Because now you're giving me too much energy. Too much energy. Yeah, I, I'm a mother. Hello. Okay, I'm gonna take a few questions before I get out of here. A few more questions before I get out of here. Okay, do you think older men are easier to get the money from than younger men? I think all men are easy to get money from. Older, young, all the same thing. All the same, all the same. But older men tend to be a little bit more stable in life. So that's why it, it, it seems like it's more easier. But again, what older men understand that they have controlling ways. They do have controlling ways. I can't even lie to you. Again, my ex, my last ex was older than me by 10 years. So they do, it's easy to get money from them because you're young and they want to be around that young energy, but they tend to have controlling ways. That's just the issue with older men. And I'm not saying all older guys are like that, but majority of them are like that. Majority, majority of them want you to mature faster than your age. And that's how it is. That's usually how it is. No, it's not bad. It's not bad. But if I'm if I'm 24 and he's like 34, what he wants is is too is different. It, it's not that's a whole generation. Ten years is a whole generation. Think about it. Ten years is a whole generation. He's 20. I'm 10. Okay, I'm 10 years. Okay, now think about it like this. I'm 10 years old and he's 20. Doesn't that sound bad? It don't sound bad. The older it gets, it don't sound bad because it's older. But think about a 10 year old dating someone that's 20. That sounds bad. That's like, damn, what is a 20-year-old doing with a 10-year-old? But it, it doesn't sound as bad the older it goes. But it is, it's a, it's a huge difference. But let's say mm, a 11-year-old or a 12-year-old or a 13-year-old dating a 10-year-old, you could kind of see like the age gap. It's like kind of close in age. But a 10-year-old dating someone that's 20, that's a huge age gap. That's 10 years. That's a huge age gap. That's a whole different generation. Because now he already drinking alcohol, going to the club. I'm still sitting there, you know, dancing to youtube videos and stuff like that you know what i'm saying thank you sis i i be hating when they when when people ask where do you find these men they're everywhere 
like I said, have this in your mind, and I'm going to end this live real quick. I'm going to say this, and I'm going to end this episode. You are a 5 plus 5, a 10. When you are, when you have in your mind, I'm a 5 plus 5. I know how to package myself good. I look good. I smell good. I'm smart. I'm that girl. You're not going to be asking where to find them. They're going to be finding you. Hello. You know what I'm saying? So, guys, I'm going to end this here. <laughs>